Okay, let's uh, let's start our stream today. Uh, hopefully, it will be useful. So uh, while we're waiting for some more people to join, uh, let me uh, tell a little bit about um, what we're going to be doing today. So the idea of this stream is to um, of today's live session is to um, first of all to develop some um, some patterns with uh, Grasshopper. Because uh, I think that this is one of the most efficient ways to learn this uh, tool. Because uh, patterns are um, they are ideal for uh, parametric uh, design and for the for grasshopper as well. Uh, because they are repetitive, they are complex, they are quite time consuming to make them uh, manually or uh, to model them manually. That's why um, it's really it's really good exercise and really good uh, thing to make with uh, the grasshopper. So uh, today we're going to um, make a few patterns, um, base, uh, like existing patterns, we're going to try to replicate them, but the same principles can be used to create your own patterns as well. Um, yeah, so um, I, think it, I think it's, uh, it's, it's a really good, uh, good method to, to learn the tool because it has very clear logics and uh, logics is actually crucial for, uh, for Grasshopper, it's not like Data management is also quite important, but uh, the most important thing uh, while using this tool is understanding the logics. And I think uh, the patterns, uh, and uh, especially like very complex uh, patterns, they are uh, ideal for this uh, for this goal. So okay, let's let's uh, go ahead and let's uh, try to uh, maybe. Uh, we are to set up our grasshopper uh, interface. Let's make um, um, yeah. I'm gonna put the bifocals here so you can see the range of the components I'm gonna be using. And uh, yeah, this stream will be recorded. So um, also we're going to talk about some principles uh, of uh, pattern development. And we will be launching our course about patterns soon. So uh, this is also kind of a, a like a teaser for that for that course as well. So um, yeah, also if you have any questions or if you would like us to um, go through some specific patterns or some specific uh, facades or specific uh, designs in our next streams or in our um, next course, please let us know, uh, drop a comment or uh, uh, send us a private message on our Instagram. We are like, very uh, responsive there. So let's uh, go ahead and let's start uh, actually talking about uh, the topic of today's uh, live session. Uh, as you can see, I already opened uh, two images, uh, two patterns actually, that uh, we will be kind of decoding and uh, remaking with uh, Grasshopper to make it a bit more uh, controlled and uh, more uh, interesting. So let's start with a very simple pattern. Actually, this is like something super, super simple. But still, I think it's quite, uh, quite. Uh, it can be quite useful for the beginners to um, understand the logics of how do we start approaching uh, some uh, facades, styling patterns, and so on. And then we are going to get to something more complex, which is uh, this pattern. I think it's going to be a bit more and more interesting. So we will try to um, go with the first one as as fast as possible. So let's let's uh, let's start talking about the key principles of the patterns and how do we debunk them. So, as uh, most of you already know, uh, we try to create a so-called pseudocode before we start uh, working with the uh, grasshopper. And the pseudocode is uh, actually, well, actually even uh, programmers do the same. Uh, pseudocode is uh, the textual description of uh, your code, of what you are going to do with your uh, um, definition and uh, uh, you describe, let's say, we start from making a point, then we make a rectangle, then we divide it into parts, then we make each part three dimensional, so on and so forth, for example, right? So let's let's think about how are we going to create this pattern here. Let's uh, try to divide it into steps. Well, first of all, I think uh, we will need to create a point because everything um, in the SOPR kind of starts... Um, from uh, from points from uh, a, like starting point let's say which is going to be here and then we're going to create a rectangle that later on is going to be divided into these uh, diamonds yeah 
So, okay, let's make it like that. Let's uh, start from like 60. That's too little. Let's say 500 then. Uh, yes. Even more, maybe 1000. Yeah, this, this uh, dimension uh, looks kind of good for me. I'm also going to scale this a bit, uh, scale this down a bit so that it's um, more similar to what we are doing. Um, yeah, okay, let's say, let's say this is going to be our rectangle and let's, uh, let's turn it into a surface because, or actually do we need to turn it into a surface? No, I don't think so. Let's actually go to, um, let's go directly to the grid. Let's take the hexagonal grid, right? You see that basically when we start um, looking at this pattern, we see that these diamonds, they form hexagons, right? So, which means that we can start from a hexagonal grid, then we can divide it into three diamonds, and then we can also, oh, sorry. Um, what happened? Ah, okay, sorry, I just went to the wrong view. Okay, fine. Uh, yeah, so basically we uh, then uh, start uh, scaling uh, down those uh, diamonds and we create this kind of uh, pattern with a variable density. So it's super simple and super straightforward. So once we understand the logics of the facade, of the pattern, sorry, we can, um, we can go ahead and uh, actually start uh, working with the... <clears throat> with the grid. So let's make the hexagonal grid. Let's uh, use this as a starting point and uh, for the size uh, let's let's pick something like 100 maybe. Okay, maybe a bit less. Like maybe, uh, 70. Uh, and yeah also you can see that basically these these um, hexagons are oriented a bit differently than uh, those ones, so we might need to rotate this plane, and for that we're going to use the rotate component. By default it gets rotated by um, 90 degrees, which is uh, 0 0.5 times pi, right, so uh, actually... So, Right, because we need to use the There we go. Yeah? So you see that basically we, we made this um, yeah, this kind of um, rotation. So then we're gonna do this so that So yeah, this is kind of our the base for our pattern and um, and for our grid, and let's let's also add some uh, some um, dimensions here. I'm gonna use the slider with uh, 12, yeah. so maybe a bit less. Also, maybe we can make the grid a bit smaller. Let's say it's gonna be 50, maybe, and then we make. Okay. okay, this looks good to me. So let's uh, let's start with um, let's start to make our pattern. Uh, you can see that we get uh, hexagons, and each hexagon is actually um, a separate uh, element. It's a separate closed polyline, right? Like a polygon. So uh, basically, this means that we should actually graft it to make sure that each hexagon will be treated. At an individual level, right? So we need to make sure that each hexagon is a separate tree branch. Uh, then we need to create these uh, these lines. In fact, we are not creating the the uh, grill, right? We are creating the uh, closed diamonds here. And for that, we will need to make those lines too, right? So let's let's uh, say we explode the hexagon, right? And we get the polygon center, super useful component, which uh, allows us to get the uh, center uh, average of polyline vertices, uh, average of polyline edges, and uh, areas enjoyed. Right? In this case, they are all gonna be in the same point. I would <coughs> I would suggest to use the area centroid in 
in like in uh, most cases when we're dealing with some uh, more complex polygons let's say so yeah this is this is the this is the point uh, and uh, those are the points as well so you can see that here we have the vertices and we have actually have seven of them uh, which is um, which happens because which happens because uh, some because the end and the start point they overlap so actually we need to say cool index and uh, remove the last index which is minus one <clears throat> so yeah now we get six points for each uh, for each uh, hexagon right <clears throat> and let's now create the let's now uh, define the points which will be connected to the center to form those those uh, diamonds so uh, for that we're going to use the dispatch component right so we can see that we get the points in a and the points in b those are the points that we don't need and those are the points that we need actually right if we want to replicate this pattern uh, as close as possible to the you see like if we connect let's do it actually let's connect it to the line <coughs> so let's use the the center of the of the hexagon as a center point as a starting point sorry and the um, these points as the end points of the lines so as you can see we get those divisions quite accurately and now we just need to create those uh, diamonds yeah so we already have one line for each diamond and now we need to take the segments of the hexagons and use them as the second side of our diamonds right so again let's let's use a dispatch <coughs> and let's uh, <coughs> Let's use the dispatch and let's uh, take the curves of E. Let's see. Uh, okay, so as you can, as you can, uh, like here, for example, you cannot tell which lines are selected because all of the hexagons they kind of overlap. So we need to go to the uh, to the um, uh, like to the hexagon which is very close to the side to the edge of our grid. And you can see that this line is selected, this one is not selected, this one is selected, so which means that uh, this, this, and these lines get selected, right? So basically, um, yeah, basically you can tell which, which of them get uh, selected and uh, which of them do you need. So let's, let's uh, actually make a root surface here. Three, two, so one, two. You see that now uh, the geometry we are we are not getting the result that we would want to. So let's try to do this. Nope. Okay. So let's 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 then try to be smart and let's make the let's use the evaluate uh, curve component. I right click here. I say reparameterize. I right click and go to set number zero point five. Yeah, uh, and um, why why we are doing this? Because we need to uh, see which uh, which uh, lines correspond uh, to which. So for that, we're going to use the component that is called point list, right? So it will basically show us the order of the points. Yeah, in each in each set of lines so you can see that this is line number zero line number one line number two yeah and we do the same thing here for those uh, sets yeah so you can see that zero and zero they will be basically matching when we do the root surface uh, when we make the root surface they will be matching right <clears throat> and that's not what we are looking for for us uh, we need to make sure that these lines they will be kind of um, parallel to each other not kind of, but parallel to each other, and they will be also uh, like groups in pairs, right? So uh, for that, we need to make, to apply the shift list operation, yeah, to make sure that this this uh, set of uh, lines actually 
um, gets a bit uh, shift, it gets shifted by one or two or minus one elements, right? So in this case, we need to shift it by minus one. Yeah, I'm gonna create a panel because we're not gonna change it. Yeah, uh, I mean we don't need a slider for that. We can just uh, get it with the panel. So you see that basically we we yeah we get these uh, pairs correctly. Uh, so don't make mistake. This this one uh, this uh, point number one doesn't belong to this hexagon. It actually belongs to the next one. And you see they are they are colored differently, right? So this this line will be coupling with this one. This one will be coupling with this one, and this one will be coupling with this one. So now it's now it should be correct. And now we can make the root surface from uh, those two sets of of curves. Uh, yeah, and another important thing is that we need to make sure that those lines they have the same same direction. So for that we need to use the flip curve component, right? Which can be found here in uh, curve util uh, flip curve, and we will basically flip those curves using those ones as the as the uh, guide curves. Yeah. So now there we go. Yeah. Uh, please uh, send any questions uh, or any um, any um, doubts into the chat. Uh, my colleague and, and I we will uh, check it out after the live session, and uh, we will respond to everything. And also, uh, yeah, also we will uh, try to we will upload the recording of this live session so we'll be able to uh, watch it again. If you have any doubts or any questions. All right, so uh, yeah, basically it seems like we we are done with our uh, our base uh, geometry. Uh, now it's it's uh, we're good to go to make it um, um, make it smaller uh, to uh, add some uh, some uh, uh, variety to these things. So let's let's uh, start with something really basic. Let's try to replicate this pattern first, and then we're gonna have some some more fun with our own um, experiments. So let's try to um, make sure that the, the let's let's make the pattern in a way that uh, hexagons uh, sorry diamonds get smaller towards the top of the of the pattern, right? So let's take the central point. Uh, I'm gonna take it by uh, using the area component. For those of you who have the Heteroptera plugin, you can also use the component called uh, Center, which is uh, a bit faster, as you can tell, right? Because it it only Calculates the it only computes the center point of the of the diamond, but not the not the area. That's why it takes a bit less time to compute. But in our case, 32 milliseconds. Honestly, it's not a big deal. Okay, so let's uh, let's move on and let's uh, apply the scaling. So let's use the scale component. Uh, we're going to use the centroid as the center for our scale component and uh, we're going to use our um, rule surfaces as the geometry. And as you can see, by default, the scaling factor is set to um, 0 0.5, that's why all of them now look the same. But that's not what we're looking for. Uh, we're looking for a gradual uh, decrease in scale uh, for all of those uh, uh, diamonds. So what we need to do, we need to um, extract the coordinate of the of the centroids, and we need to remap it the y coordinate in this case. We need to remap it into uh, the scaling factors. So we take it as values. We take the bounds. It's important to right click and say platen here so that we can uh, operate on the entire entire set of, uh, of values not only um, because you see like here the tree structure is um, it has uh, uh, 504 elements and um, uh, it's divided into branches of three items which uh, probably means that we have something around 100 and which is some 160 something um, elements in each. Uh, sorry, 
I I'll actually tell you an exact number. It has uh, yeah, it has 168 uh, hexagons, and here we have 168 branches. Each branch consists of three uh, diamonds. So, in order to make sure that we will take the the bounds of the entire data set, we need to flatten it here. Uh, I mean, ideally, if we are talking about scalable scripts, we can say uh, shift plots. This component doesn't exist in the default grasshopper. It comes from it comes from um, uh, it comes from uh, sorry from the tree slow plugin, I think, and it's super useful. So we can say simplify and uh, actually need to shift it by two, but in any case, right now we don't care about it that much. But still, <laughs> nevertheless, uh, install this plugin which is really helpful in uh, in some more complicated scripts. Okay, so we get these remap numbers, but first we need to provide the target domain. So let's say construct domain and let's uh, take the let's take something from 0 0.12 to 0 0.90. Actually, reverse order because we are we are going to have um, larger elements in um, lower points. Yeah, like here, and uh, smaller elements towards the top of um, our um, grid. Okay, so let's let's connect it here, and there we go. Yeah. So you can see that basically now we we get the same uh, thing. Uh, if we want to be a bit more more a bit closer to the to the reference image, we can uh, even uh, go to change the background. Maybe not connect completely to zero, but something like that instead. And then we can also use the custom preview to paint those hexagons into black. So we use swatch and we make it completely black and we connect it here. And then we hide this thing. Uh, that's kind of it. So yeah, basically now we, we get something very, very close to, to what we had here. We can also make it a bit smaller. Yeah, so as you can tell, it looks pretty similar to this one. Um, but now I want to make it a bit more fun because like making a gradient from top to bottom is um, I think it's a bit boring. I mean it's good to understand the logics but still it's, it's a bit uh, it's a bit boring here I think. So and also I think it's gonna be beneficial for, for the sake of for the sake of learning to make <clears throat> something more uh, more complex. Uh, complex doesn't necessarily mean better, don't get me wrong, but um, if you make, if you manage to understand more complex patterns, it means you will have no problems with, with making, um, with making uh, simpler ones, and also with making some, um, let's say, not only patterns but something more, um, more fabrication related or more physical related, let's say. So it's always uh, worth it uh, testing your your uh, skills on something more complex. So what I want to do now, I want to create an attractor curve. By the way, we can also make it in Grasshopper, but this this session is uh, not about making uh, curves and geometry in Grasshopper. It's about patterns. So for the sake of time, we are going to make um, we are going to draw the curve by hand in Grasshopper, and uh, we're going to br uh, sorry in Rhino, uh, and we're going to bring it into Grasshopper. Let's take the curve and let's set one curve and let's use this one. Yeah. Okay. So now uh, I want to use the uh, pool points component, and I'm going to use those center points as the as the um, yeah, basically as 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 a point and the curve as an attractor. As a pooling geometry, yeah. 
So what we're going to do now, we're going to take these distances and instead of using the y coordinate as a uh, defining um, parameter for the scaling factor, we're going to use the uh, distance from each of those uh, diamonds to the curve, right? So I'm going to use the normalizer component from uh, Heteroptera plugin, which is also another uh, super helpful uh, and also free uh, plugin for Grasshopper. So please uh, make sure to download it. It's, it's going to make your life much easier. And I'm going to use the graph mapper uh, to just to just to have some uh, some more control of the over the um, yeah some more control over the uh, scaling factor and uh, overall behavior of the beta. I'm gonna take the same uh, same setup like that from here. Yeah, so I can just copy this uh, this thing, and uh, we're even gonna use the same uh, same domain from here. But this part I will need to copy like that. So yeah, let's let's make it uh, like that, like that, and yeah, there we go. So as you can tell now, the pattern gets affected by our curve. And also, more than that, we can uh, go for graph types and can select the busier graph. And we can make it the opposite, right? Also, we can right click and we can go for, let's say, sign summation graph. And we can start making something even crazier with uh, this uh, kind of um, behavior, right? So we can make something really, really uh, convoluted, like that, for example. Yeah, I kind of like it actually. Uh, looks, uh, looks, uh, looks nice to me. I don't know. Uh, anyway, not that I have the best taste, but uh, I think it's not that bad. Uh, okay, so let's let's um, yeah, I mean. Uh, we're not going to spend too much time on this, but just just to let you know, you can, uh, yeah, you see, uh, we, when you when your graph goes a bit uh, crazier, you can uh, achieve something, like, from, from this pattern, I cannot tell if it was really derived from this curve, but I think it looks kind of cool. So, <clears throat> well, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit not, uh, not very, um, let's say, scientific, because we, we did not actually... Um, we did not. We, we we just made this create by like occasionally, but uh, yeah, this one is also kind of kind of nice. But yeah, I mean, uh, if if the result is good, uh, then uh, for the conceptual phase or whatever, you can uh, still use it and then you can uh, come up with a more uh, organized, more ordered um, result afterwards. Uh, yeah. So I think this this pattern is uh, is uh, kind of done. I think it was not that uh, not that didn't take that long actually. And now we are going to make something a bit more uh, more convoluted and a bit more complex, which is uh, this pattern. So yeah, maybe I'm gonna keep uh, keep it open for the um, yeah maybe it's not enough. Uh, we'll see. But yeah, in any case, if you follow the the, um, the description, we um, yeah, you probably should have all these uh, steps. If not, uh, please uh, drop us a comment or send us a direct message. We will uh, send you the definition, or we will actually upload it to the Google Drive and, and post it on uh, YouTube. So yeah, uh, as as mentioned before, please don't hesitate to contact us. We will be glad to help. Um, so yeah, um, okay. Let's say let's say this is fine for now. Okay, so yeah, let's let's uh, actually move on. Let's make another. Um, another code. So, points. Yeah, I don't know if we need to keep this, but let's let's, let's keep it for now. Uh, maybe when I move it a bit up here. Yep. 
Okay, so let's get to something more interesting and something more complex. First of all, I'm gonna make it a bit more cubical in shape. I mean, make, I'm gonna make these uh, kind of pieces look a bit more cubical. So, what is so interesting about this pattern? Why did I select it as uh, our our second pattern? Well, uh, I really like it because it's uh, it's a two two dimensional pattern which looks like a three dimensional one. So here we are dealing with an optical illusion, which is um, kind of cool, I think. And uh, I know that many architects, not many architects, but like some of the most skilled ones, they use it in, and designers, they use the interiors to um, provide different values to the space and to the um, environment and uh, cause different feelings. So yeah, I think it's, it's quite interesting. And also, also I think it's quite interesting for our goal, which is uh, learning grasshopper. And uh, in this case, uh, we have a lot of, a lot of, um, uh, a lot of things to, to learn actually. So let's, let's start. Uh, the same way as we did before. So let's create a let's use the construct points component to start with. Let's find the coordinate, and then we're going to talk a bit more about the, the pattern itself and about the, about its uh, logics. Yeah. Okay. So let's say three uh, three thousand five hundred should be fine. Okay. So what is the logics of this pattern? Well, as you can see. If we kind of divide it into, um, if we try to divide it into individual parts, we will realize that I'm going to take the, the, the red line so it's more visible. Yeah, we will see that it consists of hexagons, right? So. Let's see. I mean, our brain kind of tricks us and uh, looks for us like it's a like it's a cube, right? But in fact, if we perceive it as a as a two-dimensional pattern, we will realize that it's that is a it's a um, it's a hexagon. Yeah. So, as you can tell, this this is clearly a hexagon, and this is the center of the hexagon. And again, this hexagon consists of uh, several, uh, in this case, like six by six uh, diamonds. And these diamonds, they all have different, uh, different scale, right? So they get smaller towards the edges and they get bigger towards the, the center. But they don't get smaller towards all edges uniformly. They get smaller towards like these three points. Right, and these three points they are kind of medium size, and in the center they have the um, let's say large size. Yeah. So, how are we gonna achieve this result? Well, uh, first of all, again we need to create a hexagonal grid, uh, just the same same uh, we're using the same method we did before for our previous exercise. Then we need to divide it into three, uh, let's say. Uh, faces of our let's say cube right and then each face needs to be divided into uh, a number of uh, of uh, diamonds as well in this case it's like six by six and then we need to scale them down towards this point yeah all right so having said that let's move on and let's uh let's take the <clears throat> Let's um, uh, yeah. Let's start. Let's start making it. So again, uh, we're gonna use the same principle we did before. So we're gonna use the x y plane uh, in, in constructing in this point. Yeah, we're gonna rotate it by ninety degrees because again, you see that this this hexagon has the same orientation as the one from the previous exercise, right? So we need to rotate this. This plane by 90 degrees. And let's go to uh, vector, grid, hexagonal grid. So we take this as a plane. Uh, for this scale, we can take, let's say, 100 maybe. And uh, yeah, for 
uh, x and y extends, let's take, I don't know, 6 and maybe 7, something like this. I don't know. 7, take 6, 7. And then 7 is better. Okay, whatever. Uh, we can change it uh, later. Uh, we can even make this pattern a bit, uh, a lot bigger. Uh, for us, what is important right now is understanding the logics, and then if the logics and the script are correct, uh, like definition are correct, then uh, we can um, scale it up or down as much as we want. Uh, so for us, it's most, the most important thing is building this this framework. So okay, let's let's uh, take these uh, these hexagons. Let's grab them. Yeah, like that. So uh, each each one is gonna be. Uh, Convert it into an individual branch. So let's uh, take the uh, polygon center. I'm gonna go a bit faster in this part because we are, we have already uh, talked about it in our previous exercise, so we already kind of know what is going on more or less. We're gonna take the um, area centroid here. Let's also explode the um, the hexagons here, yeah, like that. And let's let's do let's basically do the same very same things we did for the previous exercise. So let's do index here. We remove the last point, so we don't <coughs> so they do not overlap. <coughs> and use the dispatch uh, component for the points, and we create lines between the uh, center point and the, those points, right? Actually, not really, because we need to use the other points, yeah, these ones. So you see, if we take this, <coughs> if we take this hexagon, we uh, will get the, these uh, lines. Okay, so yeah, let's continue. So let's make it a bit different. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> yeah, uh, then we need to basically take those uh, segments, we dispatch them again, we say shift list by minus one, as we remember from our previous exercise, so that this. Um, so that we make sure that our lines create correct uh, pairs, yeah, and then we say um, rule surface. Ah, also we need not to forget to flip curve. These curves should be flipped following those lines. And then we make that. There we go. Right this time, no mistakes. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, basically we already have our base for our uh, for our pattern, and we can actually uh, move uh, move forward. So let's uh, let's now think how can we create those divisions. Well, of course we can uh, make um, some some arrays. We can deform them or something like that. But actually, there is a very very easy way to do it. Maybe not the most straightforward, but it's really easy. We can go to mesh. We can take the uh, which is that? So I think it's utility. Yeah. Sorry, I, I keep typing the the components and do not always remember where they are. But if if you don't remember where a certain component is, you can always um, type its name or uh, like find it, and then you click Control uh, Control Alt Alt Control and uh, left click. And it will show you where where is the location of the component. So it's, uh, it's especially useful if you are dealing with someone else's uh, script, and you don't you can find the plugin or the um, tab or where a certain component is taken from. So yeah. Okay, and uh, we're going to use the mesh surface because mesh surface actually divides a surface into a perfect. Um, U uh, V grid, as you can see now, yeah, it's already <laughs> done basically the division, right? So by default, it gets divided into five and five um, uh, mesh faces along each direction. 
Ah, and it's also quite important to like it's very important actually to make sure that uh, U and V in this case they match. Not in every case, but in our particular case, right? So that they will meet in the same points. Okay, so let's let's make six divisions like it was uh, like it is in, in this uh, in this uh, reference image. And actually, let's let's uh, let's start uh, changing this. Um, yeah, let's start changing this uh, geometry. So, yeah, now it's actually quite simple. Uh, we just need to take. Uh, we just need to explode those meshes. Also, yeah, we need to use mesh explode. This also comes from a plugin. I don't remember which one. It's either mesh edit or mesh tools. But both of them are super useful. So again, uh, please uh, make sure to download them from Fit for Rhino. They are also free, um, and they are going to make your life a lot easier. So um, yeah, and now as you can you can tell, uh, let's take it around here. So we're going to be doing fans. Yeah, we're going to simplify it a bit. Yeah, so. As you can see, uh, the, I'm going to give it a textual representation. As you can see, uh, we have each branch has three levels where the first, first uh, figure uh, responds to the, to the column number, the second figure responds to the... Um, actually, what did it respond to? One second. Uh, so we get a bit, a bit, a bit lost in these uh, numbers. So let's say we're gonna do three. I mean, it's not gonna affect our our uh, work, and there are no mistakes. It's just that I want to um, demonstrate uh, <coughs> this uh, this. Um, No, I'm gonna do it this way. Let's say we're gonna make it um, zero. The star in uh, in uh, this syntax uh, means that we are we don't care which number is it. It can be anything. Like here it has to be zero, and then the second and the third figure they can be anything, whatever. So you see that basically the first first um, index. Uh, refers to for, no, not sorry, not index, but first figure of our uh, path refers to um, the um, row. Yeah, let's change it. Let's put a star here and let's put zero here, so we can see. Oh, oh, sorry, second. Something here is happening. Yeah, this this uh, second figure refers to the yeah it refers to the um, um, hexagon, and the third figure will refer to to the face uh, to the yeah to the yeah to one third of this hexagon, uh, and then uh, each of these. Thirds will be divided into thirty-six uh, mesh faces. Yeah, this is kind of the organization of our data tree, right? So, uh, yeah, now now it's clear for us. Another like very 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 important thing uh, while working with Grasshopper is that at every point of your uh, of your workflow, you need to be aware of what is going on in your data tree. So if at some point you do not know what is going on, it's going to be very hard to uh, achieve uh, a good result because uh, Grasshopper is all about data management. So you need to be aware of your data structure very well. So even if it takes you some time to stop and to go a bit back to rethink some things and to analyze your tree, like we just did it here, uh, do it because it's very, very important to, um, to understand it. Uh, yeah, so, okay, uh, let's, let's move on and let's, uh, let's, uh, go ahead. Okay, so now we have all these, uh, faces here, uh, exploded and, uh, let's, uh, let's, um, 
let's scale them down as well, like we did it in our previous exercise. So let's take the scale. Let's take the actually for for the mesh uh, for the mesh faces. If you want to find their center, you can use the component that's called face normals. Yeah, because it uh, it finds the center of the mesh face in the normal. Be careful because this component kind of automatically grafts the centers. You see that now each uh, tree branch consists of only one element. So here we need to use either tree in tree or shift paths. The difference is that, I mean, there are some other differences in between these two components, but right now uh, what is important for us is that uh, the trim tree is a native grasshopper component and the shift paths is, uh, it comes from a plugin called uh, tree slot. So yeah, basically if you don't have tree slot, you can use trim tree right now. For, for, for this particular case, they will act the same way, but uh, in general, I prefer to use the shift paths, but that's, that's another topic. Uh, right now, it doesn't matter. Yeah, and then we can take the centers and uh, and uh, use them as um, as a scaling uh, centers. And also, we can use them as <clears throat> as the um, as the points for the pull point components. Yeah. So. For the pull point, we're going to use those centers here. And for the attractor geometry, we're going to use the center of our hexagon, which is this one. Yeah? So let's take another point component. Let's say it. And let's bring it here. So now we're going to connect those points here, but there is a very important thing to consider. So if we take the tree statistics, which is another super useful component for the hopper, because it allows us to re retrieve all the information about our data tree, including all the paths, uh, the length of each uh, branch, and the amount of those branches, you will see that we have only 42 centers, because we have 42 uh, hexagons, right? So we have 42 um, tree branches here, but we have 126 tree branches here which is three times more. And uh, if right now we connect it this way, it's gonna mess up our data structure. Why? Because we have a different amount of tree branches in both cases, right? Because we have one center for each hexagon, but we also have three, uh, let's call it faces, for each hexagon as well. And each face is being divided into 36 points so we have three times more um, sets of points than uh, centers, yeah? So basically for each hexagon, we need not one point, but we need three points which are located in the very same position. I hope it makes sense. Uh, if not, again, um, let us know. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to try to explain it uh, a bit more right now. So. Basically, what we need to do, in other terms, we need to duplicate those points to make sure that for each uh, for each um, face we get one specific point. And we are going to duplicate it three times. But how do we define how do we define this necessarily three times? Well, we are going to use the three statistics connected to mesh surface or actually to rule surface, it doesn't matter, we can connect it here. And you see that it shows us that for each of those hexagons, we have three rule surfaces, right? So we just need to graph this, this output and connect it here. And now you see we get 126 points and each point is being basically repeated three times, right? And now the last thing which is left to be done is graft it so that again we have 126 branches here and 126 branches here. And now for each for each uh, set of points we get one point here. Yeah. I hope it makes sense. That's, that's, that's actually a really important uh, thing to understand while working with your software. And uh, this is 
also very useful components. Don't, don't, uh, yeah, don't forget about it. Uh, okay, so now you see we get, um, and we can tell this by by the uh, by the data structure. We can uh, simplify it just for the sake of um, <coughs> numbers. <coughs> okay, so. Ah, another super important thing, which I just missed, is uh, here you see that this data structure is longer than this one. And that's why, by default, this entire uh, tree takes this structure as the, as the guideline, let's say. But we need to make sure that this structure is used as a guideline. So we need to make it principal. Right click, and we say principal. And now you see the data structure becomes more actually becomes more uh, complex and it makes more sense than uh, than before yeah it's very it's very important to to make sure you don't lose uh, any of uh, the important data from your structure in our case all three of these um, numbers are very important the first of them as we discussed before is the row second of them is the number of the like the index of the hexagon and third is the index of the um, set of points you say. Okay, so <clears throat> now what we need to do, we need to take those distances and remap them to make sure that these uh, diamonds get scaled according to, according to the proximity to these points, yeah? Okay, so... Yeah, let, let's let's do it. Let's take this um, distance. Let's connect it to values. Let's take the bounds. And this time, by the way, for the bounds, we're gonna use. We're not gonna flatten it because we're gonna use uh, the domain of one of these um, one of these faces. Let's say right. One of these sets of thirty-six points. So let's connect it here and let's take the construct domain component. Let's make something like from 0 0.12 to 0 0.90, let's see. Something like that. Let's connect it here and let's connect it here. And of course, for the geometry, we're going to use those mesh faces. You see, right? Basically, it's there, but there is one annoying thing which does not happen here, but happens in our case, which is that all these um, mesh faces get pro <clears throat> get proportionally smaller towards the sides, right? So. In our case, um, this this uh, attractor point basically it gets uniformly smaller. But what happens here is that it follows this kind of triangle, right? So it does not uh, gets more uniform. For example, this uh, mesh face gets much smaller than this. So maybe the method that we used was not the most efficient. So what can we do instead? Uh, to make sure that it's uh, it, it's gonna work better, maybe we can take um, we can take those uh, those points, sorry those points, yeah, like the A points here, and use them as the attractors instead of using the center point. So let's take them and let's connect them to. Instead of these duplicated data, let's connect them. No. You see, basically we can... Uh, no. So, uh, what this means, what, what does, what does uh, this mean? This means that we need to combine multiple attractors. Uh, sorry, not multiple attractors, but yeah, in a way multiple attractors, but multiple... Um, Factors defining the scale. So we need to make sure that the the, uh, hex, uh, the diamonds get larger towards the center, and at the same time, 
they get smaller towards like fro uh, following these uh, these um, lines. Yeah. So uh, for that, I'm gonna make I'm gonna increase this this parameter to something like 0 0.6. And at the same time, I'm gonna use another set of uh, of uh, pull points of those uh, of those points here. Yeah. And let's let's take so one second. Let me let me check one more thing. Let's make the tree branch components. Just pieces. This is a very useful cluster, by the way, which we're gonna make now. Uh, it can be used for for. Um, For testing your um, your tree structure, so this thing and yeah, let's output this thing. Let's take the same thing, but for for those points. So yeah. So okay, those are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They match. They match, which is good. So, uh, I was checking if the tractor point matches with the uh, set of points we have, and it does. So now the only thing which is left to, to be done is uh, we need to um, take those distances, take the same uh, set of uh, yeah, three map numbers and everything. And then we use another another domain which goes from from one to see something like that, and then we multiply them by one another like that. No, sorry. There we go. You see. So basically, now what we did, we used multiple. Uh, multiple uh, values from, from our attractor uh, geometries and now we get this kind of um, this thing which looks very similar to the, to the cubes to the cubes from, from the reference yeah and then we can also we can also change this this uh, parameter to make it significantly smaller now we get this kind of cube effect here as well as in the previous example, let's take the custom preview. Well, maybe the that is a bit extreme, we can make it a bit grayish. And yeah, there we go. Let's make it bigger. More. Yeah. So yeah, this is uh, this is uh, the pattern. Uh, it's um, yeah, we can we can uh, play with uh, these uh, values. We can also I mean we could also apply the graph mapper for that, but um, doesn't really matter. Uh, Actually, one one thing that I think is kind of kind of really can be really uh, exciting to to experiment with is um, using the graph mapper not only for the uh, let's say using the graph mapper so that we can um, make these cubes vary depending on the attractor geometry as well. So let's make let's make another curve. Uh, let's bring it to my sopra. This is like a bonus exercise which I did not plan, I just thought it's gonna, it can be um, kind of nice to, to show it to you. Um, yeah and let's let's take let's take this curve as the tractor for our um, for our hexagons. So let's take the point component. So it goes it's important to take the centers of the hexagons, right? Not not the not the centers of the uh, mesh faces, right? Which are the hexagon centers. 
uh, yeah, and then we take the map numbers. This time we flatten the bounds because we need to work with the entire set of uh, of hexagons. I mean, say construct domain. This. And let's say we want to control this. Uh, let's say we want to multiply it by something from one to up to zero point twenty. Uh, sorry, zero point six. I don't know, something like that to start with. And let's make. Yeah, you see we have forty two values. But here we duplicated it three times. So let's take this number and let's duplicate this uh, this number as well. Let's multiply it. Here. You see, right? So basically, what we did, we kind of we not we not not only we change our our um, scaling factors depending on the on the position of the point inside each of the hexagons, but we also change the the um, scaling factor uh, from polygon to polygon, for sorry from hexagon to hexagon, right? And Moreover, what we can do, we can also take the graph mapper. So let me, yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit unorganized, but uh, we'll try to clean it up right now. Yeah, something like this, I hope it's should be fine. Let's also try to improve it. So it's a bit more, more ordered and more clean. Uh, it's always important to uh, keep your scripts ordered. I keep telling this, but I always fail to do the same with my own scripts. So sorry about this. Um, yeah, and then now what we need to do, we need to um, just, we just need to add the graph mapper here. Let's take the normalizer. Let's take the graph mapper. Yeah, let's bring it here. Uh, and then we can just make it with a sign summation. We can make something really uh, spectacular. Well, not spectacular, maybe, but something uh, something that looks uh, a bit more interesting than uh, just uh, the normal um, division. And yeah, as always, as 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 uh, like in all of our previous um, options. It still keeps these aesthetics of uh, of, uh, of a cube, right, or a three-dimensional pattern. So yeah, you can you can see that uh, you can create multiple uh, iterations with this uh, with this um, yeah with this um, script. So last thing, just to give you an idea how we can make pretty nice. Not not final, let's say images, but pretty cool, um, um, pretty cool um, um, Sorry, I'm uh, not uh, <laughs> putting up words together very well today. Uh, you can make really nice um, conceptual images with uh, with uh, Rhino, not not even uh, with. Uh, some rendering tools or whatever. Uh, you can just go to display to set up some uh, gradients, and then you can also uh, try to make let's try to make something nice here. Oh, uh, one second, yeah, I'm gonna go to render mode. I'm gonna change it to gradients. Change the colors. And make something like this. Uh, 
Uh, also, we need to do we need to combine them because those are the meshes. Yeah, there we go. Um, I mean, those are just like random colors that I selected right now. But you can also make something something nicer. You can make uh, let's say something. brighter or uh, darker but yeah uh, what I'm what I was trying to demonstrate by, by this uh, small uh, exercise is that you can also you can also make um, some previews and some um, kind of concept explanations to uh, the client or to the team or to whatever um, yeah I think I think that's actually it for uh, today uh, Again, please uh, let us know if you have any questions. Let us know if you would like to, um, if you have any questions. We always organize some one-to-one uh, -one, uh, tutorial sessions. Uh, we also organize uh, courses about Grasshopper. Uh, we are trying to make it more, to make those online training sessions, which are free and accessible to everyone, a bit more regular. Uh, so please also let us know if you would like to if you like us to um, uh, cover some other topics in our next uh, upcoming sessions and um, yeah check out our Instagram our YouTube uh, let us know if you have any suggestions or any ideas uh, we'll be always glad to help and uh, hopefully see you next. Uh,